your subconscious and the wonders of sleep you spend about 8 out of every 24 hours, or one third of your entire life, in sleep. This is an inexorable law of life. This also applies to the animal and vegetable kingdoms. Sleep is a divine law, and many answers to our problems come to us when we are sound asleep upon the bed. Many people have advocated the theory that you get tired during the day, that you go to sleep to rest the body, and that a reparative process takes place while you sleep. Nothing rests in sleep. Your heart, lungs, and all your vital organs function while you are asleep. If you eat prior to sleep, the food is digested and assimilated. Also, your skin secretes perspiration, and your nails and hair continue to grow. Your subconscious mind never rests or sleeps. It is always active, controlling all your vital forces. The healing process takes place more rapidly while you are asleep as there is no interference from your conscious mind. Remarkable answers are given to you while you are asleep. Why We Sleep Dr. John Bigelow, a famous research authority on sleep, demonstrated that at night while asleep you receive impressions showing that the nerves of the eyes, ears, nose, and taste buds are active during sleep, and also that the nerves of your brain are quite active. He says that the main reason we sleep is be Dr. John Bigelow, The Mystery of Sleep, New York and London, Harper Brothers, 1903 cause the nobler part of the soul is united by abstraction to our higher nature and becomes a participant in the wisdom and foreknowledge of the gods. 138. Dr. Bigelow states also, the results of my studies have not only strengthened my convictions that the supposed exemption from customary toils and activities was not the final purpose of sleep, but have also made clearer to my mind the conviction that no part of a man's life deserves to be considered more indispensable to its symmetrical and perfect spiritual development than the while he is separated from the phenomenal world in sleep. Prayer a form of sleep your conscious mind gets involved with vexations, strife, and contentions of the day, and it is very necessary to withdraw periodically from sense evidence and the objective world, and commune silently with the inner wisdom of your subconscious mind. By claiming guidance, strength, and greater intelligence in all phases of your life, you will be enabled to overcome all difficulties and solve your daily problems. This regular withdrawal from sense evidence and the noise and confusion of everyday living is also a form of sleep, that is, you become asleep to the world of the senses and alive to the wisdom and power of your subconscious mind. Startling effects of sleep deprivation and lack of sleep can cause you to become irritable, moody, and depressed. Dr. George Stevenson of the National Association for Mental Health says, I believe it can safely be said that all human beings need a minimum of six hours sleep to be healthy. Most people are wrong. All those who think they can get along with less are fooling themselves. Medical research scholars, investigating sleep processes and deprivation of sleep, point out that severe insomnia has preceded psychotic breakdown in some instances. Remember, you are spiritually recharged during sleep, and adequate sleep is essential to produce joy and vitality in life. the lapses were periods of blankness, sometimes they were filled with images, wisps of dreams. As hours of sleep loss mounted, the lapses took place more often and lasted longer, perhaps two or three seconds. Even if the subjects had been piloting an airliner in a thunderstorm, they still couldn't have resisted micro-sleeps for those few priceless seconds. 
and it can happen to you, as many who have fallen asleep at the wheel of a car can testify. Another startling effect of sleep deprivation was its attack on human memory and perception. Many sleep-deprived subjects were unable to retain information long enough to relate it to the task they were supposed to perform. They were totally befuddled in situations requiring them to hold several factors in mind and act on them, as a pilot must when he skillfully integrates wind direction, airspeed, altitude, and glide path to make a safe landing. Sleep brings counsel a young lady in Los Angeles who listens to my morning radio talks told me that she had been offered a lucrative position in New York. 140. City at twice her present salary. She was wondering whether to accept or not and prayed prior to sleep as follows. The creative intelligence of my subconscious mind knows what is best for me. Its tendency is always lifeward, and it reveals to me the right decision, which blesses all concerned. I give thanks for the answer which I know will come to me. She repeated this simple prayer over and over again as a lullaby prior to sleep, and in the morning she had a persistent feeling that she should not accept the offer. She rejected the offer and subsequent events verified her inward sense of knowing, because the company went bankrupt in a few months following their offer of employment to her. The conscious mind may be correct on the facts objectively known, but the intuitive faculty of her subconscious mind saw the failure of the concern in question, and prompted her AC cord. Saved from certain disaster I will illustrate how the wisdom of your subconscious mind can instruct you and protect you relative to your request for right action as you go to sleep. Many years ago, before the Second World War, I was offered a very lucrative assignment in the Orient, and I prayed for guidance and the right decision as follows, infinite intelligence within me knows all things, and the right decision is revealed to me in divine order. I will recognize the answer when it comes. I repeated this simple prayer over and over again as a lullaby prior to sleep, and in a dream came the vivid realization of things to come three years hence. An old friend appeared in the dream and said, read these headlines. Do not go. The headlines of the newspaper, which appeared in the dream, related to war and the attack on Pearl Harbor. Occasionally, the writer dreams literally. The aforementioned dream is undoubtedly a dramatization of the subconscious mind which projected a person whom I trusted and respected. To some a warning may come in the form of a mother who appears in a dream. She tells the person not to go here or there, and the reason for the warning. Your subconscious mind is all wise. It knows all things. Oftentimes it will speak to you only in a voice that your conscious mind will immediately accept as true. Sometimes your subconscious will warn you in a voice which sounds like that of your mother or some loved one which may cause you to stop on the street, and you find, if you had gone another foot, a falling object from a window might have struck you on the head. My subconscious mind is one with the universal subconscious, and it knew the Japanese were planning a war and it also knew when the war would start. Dr. Ryan, director of the Department of Psychology at Duke University, has gathered together a vast amount of evidence showing that a great number of people all over the world see events before they happen, and in many instances are, therefore, able to avoid the tragic event which was foreseen vividly in a dream. The dream which I had showed clearly the headlines in the New York Times about three years prior to the tragedy of Pearl Harbor. In consequence of this dream, I immediately cancelled the trip as I felt a subconscious compulsion to do so. Three years later the Second World War proved the truth of the inner voice of intuition. Your future is in your subconscious mind remember that the future, the result of your habitual thinking, is already in your mind except when you change it through prayer. The future of a country, likewise, is in the collective subconscious of the people of that nation. There is nothing strange in the dream I had wherein I saw the headlines of the New York newspapers long before the war began. The war had already taken place in mind, and all the plans of attack were already engraved on that great recording instrument, the subconscious mind or collective unconscious of the universal mind. Tomorrow's events are in your subconscious mind, so are next week's and next months, and they may be seen by a highly psychic or clairvoyant person. 142. No disaster or tragedy can happen to you if you decide to pray. Nothing is predetermined or foreordained. Your mental attitude, that is, the way you think, feel, 
and believe determines your destiny. You can, through scientific prayer, which is explained in a previous chapter, mold, fashion, and create your own future. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. A catnap nets him $15,000 One of my students mailed me a newspaper clipping three or four years ago about a man called Ray Hammerstrom, a roller at the steel works in Pittsburgh operated by Jones and Lachlan Steel Corporation. He received $15,000 for his dream. According to the article, the engineers could not fix a faulty switch in a newly installed bar wheel which controlled the delivery of straight bars to the cooling vents. The engineers worked on the switch about 11 or 12 times to no avail. Hammerstrom thought a lot about the problem and tried to figure out a new design, which might work. Nothing worked. One afternoon he lay down for a nap, and prior to sleep he began to think about the answer to the switch problem. He had a dream in which a perfect design for the switch was portrayed. When he awoke, he sketched his new design according to the outline of his dream. This visionary catnap won Hammerstrom a check for $15,000, the largest award the firm ever gave an employee for a new idea. How a famous professor solved his problem in sleep Dr. H. V. Helpreet, professor of Assyrian at the UNI University of Pennsylvania, wrote as follows, one Saturday evening. I had been wearying myself, in the vain attempt to decipher two small fragments of agate which were supposed to belong to the fingerings of some Babylonians. About midnight, weary and exhausted, I went to bed and dreamed the following remarkable dream, a tall, thin priest of Nippur, about 40 years of age, led me to the treasure chamber of the temple. A small, low-ceilinged room without windows, while scraps of agate and lapis lazuli lay scattered on the floor. Here he addressed me as follows, the two fragments which you have published separately on pages 22 and 26 belong together, are not finger rings. The first two rings served as your rings for the statue of the god, the two fragments, you have, are the portions of them. If you will put them together you will have confirmation of my words, I awoke at once. I examined the fragments. And to my astonishment found the dream verified. The problem was then at last solved. This demonstrates clearly the creative manifestation of his subconscious mind, which knew the answer to all his problems.